everybody! I am so excited to talk about this topic. Now, disclaimer, I have never gone on a language retreat before, but I'm still excited to talk about this nevertheless because I think people should know that it exists, and the truth is I didn't even know that these existed until I watched the Women in Language conference videos from this year. And then I looked more into it, I did some research, and it sounds super exciting. And although, for the moment, I won't be able to go on one of these, I hope that maybe you will have the chance to and experience it. And if you already have, then please share your experience below because I'd love to hear about this. I know stories like this get me super pumped and super excited about language learning. Now what happened was I heard about this thing called a language retreat, and I thought, how nice would it be to go on a retreat? But then I thought, combined with languages, what could that mean? And I kind of had an idea, but I looked more into it by going to certain pages, by Googling it, and it's just super exciting because if you love travel, if you love culture, and if you love languages, all of this is tied into a very short, immersive, intentional trip that you can go on for about a week. It depends on which language retreat you go on. You could even organize your own as well, but it's super exciting. And what happened was I was looking these up and they have them for different languages, for different areas of the world. I think there was one in San Diego or there will be one in San Diego for Spanish. There's, of course, ones for Spanish in Spain. There's ones for Greek. There's ones for German. Uh, French. Those were just some that I saw, and I'm sure there's even more out there that I don't know about, but I'm going to leave some resources in the description box for you guys in case you're interested. I know that if I were living closer, because since I'm in the United States, a lot of these tend to take place over in Europe, and for me it would cost a little bit more. I'm not sure how to get good deals on flights. So for me, I wouldn't be able to just hop on a plane and go over, especially this point in my life right now, what I'm doing, I wouldn't be able to just drop everything and go for a week. But I think it sounds great if you, whether you're a student and if you have the money for this, if you're a student and you would really like that experience, but you're not committing yourself to studying abroad for a semester or a year, then you could have this one week because they last about a week or so depending on the language immersion trip that you um, book you can do that. And it's so cool. From what I've read, it seems like it's language. And it's very intentional in the sense that there is no switching to English because the whole point of this retreat is filling yourself with this language. It's a very immersive experience. And there's no switching into English. You're with somebody or maybe even more than one person who speaks that language and will make sure that the conversation is very guided in such a way that there is no switching. And if you're wondering what level you need to have, it depends. I'll, as I said, put the resources here for you to see. But it seems like for these, there's a variety of levels that can go on this trip. And ultimately, the guide will kind of tailor it to your level or the level of the people in the group. Because you're in a group, it is a small group, it's not like when you study abroad and there's a whole big group of you and then you're all speaking English together. This is more focused. It's a shorter period of time. It seems even more intensive. Now, like I said, I have never been on one myself, but I wanted to spread the word about this. And it also ties in culture. In the package, what I have read on these websites, you will get meals. You'll be living in or staying in a really nice place for that period of time and it does seem like you can have a room to yourself and then so you'll have food there might even be classes involved where you get involved with the culture yourself whether you're watching a type of dance or you're taking a dance lesson and all of this is included within there and then they'll even give you some free time to plan whatever you would like to do now there were a couple of websites that i were able i was able <laughs> to find on language retreats as well as a blog post from Eurolinguist, so I'm going to link that. But one of them was Maria Ortega Garcia, her website. She will organize retreats for Spanish specifically, and there's different themes, like one of them was creative writing, but then there's others that you could check out as well. You can check out the past ones that she's done just to see what kind of 
things that you can expect if you go on a retreat as well as this year's retreat. Then there was one from, well, a few actually. There were quite a few options for La Fleche Lingo. And that one's done by Therese La Fleche. And with that, I saw locations of Canada, um, France, Germany, different areas that you could go to. I think Spain was also one of them. And you can check out just to see an idea of what the itinerary would be if you would go for one of those retreats because everyone might plan their retreats a little bit differently even though the overall idea is the same to practice your language, get immersed in the culture, be with a small group of people. And I found one for Greek and that one, same idea, you are getting involved in the culture as well as speaking the language and you do take classes as well as having a conversation. You will also get tutored, which is really cool, especially if you're in that beginner level, then you do have some guidance there. If you're at a language plateau or you're just feeling like you're stuck in a rut and you kind of want to take your language to the next level or you feel like you've lost that excitement because you've been in the classroom setting or something just, I don't know, took your joy away for languages, maybe this is the thing that you would need to you know, it would get you back on your feet with language learning. Those are just a few examples. I know Kirsten Cable has some on her website as well, and I think they're connected to Therese Lafleche's, so I'm going to link all of that in the description. I really want to go on one of these, and I hope that I get to at some point. It's something I'd like to save up for. As of right now, like I said before, it's not something I can do, but something I would love to do. If you have been on one of them, or if you've even organized your own, because you don't have to go on one that's already organized, that just takes the planning out of it for you if you're not much of a planner. But if you've ever organized your own, please write about that in the comments section. I would love to hear about your experience. If you went on one that was already planned out, talk about your experience there. Stuff like this gets me so excited about language learning and so excited about traveling as well. All of that combined into one and that's pretty much all I've got on that. I would love to hear your stories and if you were to go on one, where would you want to go? All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I wanted to say one more thing, actually a couple more things. One thing is I've been absent for a couple of weeks because if you've been following me on Twitter, you would know I made a video about Polish, but you haven't seen it around here because it is still unlisted for now. And that is because it's not ready to be public just yet, but that is to come. As well as I have a list of topics that I would like to do videos on, but I've honestly been struggling with how I want to go about those topics, so I haven't recorded any of those videos yet, but I have my list of topics that I would like to speak about. And then the last thing is with our growing community, this is really exciting stuff, with our growing community, I was wondering if you guys would prefer to celebrate a milestone, if you guys would prefer a 50 Facts About Me video, or if you would prefer a live Q&A video. Let me know in the comments. I also plan on having a poll on Twitter for that to have more, I guess, have all the data in one place for what people would prefer. So be on the lookout for that as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!